With the recent release of Monterey, we now have Siri shortcuts on the Mac, which is awesome in and of itself, but what does that mean for us HomeKit smart home users, if anything? Well, I think it's gonna be pretty big. I came across something that got me really excited, so I wanted to hop on here today and share it with you. If you're a HomeKit user, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane, if you're new here, and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit platform with new videos published every Sunday morning right here. So you may know I love smart home automations with HomeKit and I love utilizing Siri shortcuts. And I have done a number of videos on this kind of stuff in the past. In fact, I'll put a link down below to a playlist with all those videos in case you wanna check them out. But as mentioned earlier, we now have access to create and run shortcuts right on the Mac, which is fantastic. But sadly, there is still no automations tab in the shortcuts app on the Mac like we see in the iOS version. And on top of that, so far there really hasn't been a good way to run your personal shortcuts automatically with HomeKit automations. Does that make sense? So for example, if you created, let's say a simple shortcut that, I don't know, sends an email or maybe a text message to you know some people or maybe does a number of other things, you couldn't trigger that to run automatically based on a smart home trigger, you know, like a smart button or a door sensor. And the reason for that is because smart home automations run on a HomeKit hub and your personal automations require, well, your personal device like an iPhone or an iPad. But essentially what many of us would love to be able to do, and I know that because I've heard from many of you, is run a personal shortcut triggered by a HomeKit event. Now, personal automations give us a lot more capabilities that we just can't do with home automations. You know, even if we convert to shortcut, you know, those home automations, we just can't do things like, you know, send a text message or something like that because again, those require a personal device. That is until now, thanks to shortcuts on the Mac and a little gem that I came across in the Signals for HomeKit Mac app. Now you may recall me talking about the Signals app uh, probably a couple times in the past, you know, as one of the top apps I recommend for HomeKit on your iOS device. It's actually designed for, you know, flashing your HomeKit lights to create these signals. So I was honestly a little surprised when I discovered that the new Mac version of this app could do what we're talking about today. Essentially what makes this app so special on the Mac is that it gives us the ability to create automations to run any of our personal shortcuts triggered by HomeKit accessories. So this is a pretty big deal in my opinion. To my knowledge, this is the only way to do something like this, with the exception of maybe running an automation server on a dedicated always on iOS device with the PushCut app, which is great, but honestly is probably a lot more than a lot of us want to mess with and commit to. So kudos to Matt Corey, who is the developer of the Signals for HomeKit app for building this feature and creating this new Mac version of his app. So to utilize all this, you will need a Mac running Monterey or later because that's when shortcuts became available on the Mac. You'll also need that Signals for HomeKit app on the Mac, which costs uh, a one-time payment of $7.99, I think. In my opinion, well worth it to support a developer like this who's doing some pretty awesome things that we're not seeing anywhere else so far. Now, just to be clear, this isn't like, you know, opening up the gates to the promised land that we've all been dreaming of. There are still some limitations and things to consider. So first of all, your Mac does need to be on and plugged in for this to work since again, shortcuts are getting executed on the Mac. But if you're like me and you keep a Mac plugged in all the time, you should be good to go. I've got an M1 MacBook Pro that I pretty much leave plugged in here in my studio on my desk all the time. And this works like a charm. Um, even if the computer is sleeping, but as long as it's still plugged in, this will work and those shortcuts will be able to run. Now also the app only lets you run automations based on certain sensors at this time. And those are motion sensors, water leak sensors, and uh, smart buttons. 
Now I've spoken with the developer of the app and he told me that he does plan to continue adding support for other HomeKit accessories as automation triggers, including lights, door sensors, security systems, and more, eventually having support for all HomeKit device types in times. In fact, the current beta version of his app right now, he's adding support for security systems and contact sensors, which uh, that update should be out very soon. It may actually already be out by the time you're watching this video. Again, the Signal app's main purpose is for you to be able to create these signals that flash your HomeKit lights. Currently, some of the things you can do are flash, you know, all the lights red when the sink water sensor detects a leak or use a HomeKit button to flash all the lights upstairs, you know, to let the kids know it's dinner time. But in addition to just running these signals that we create with the app, we also, again, have the ability to execute any of our shortcuts right here on the Mac. So that's awesome. What this really does for me is gets me even more excited about the potential for this, you know, in the future. Essentially, this means that it is possible to execute personal shortcuts in home automations. Shortcuts on the Mac gives us that always on device you know, that is needed in order to execute these automations or personal shortcuts triggered by your smart home. Now keep in mind, these shortcuts are being executed on the Mac, so they must be shortcuts that can run and execute on the Mac. This is still, you know, very new for the Mac operating system. We should see more options and features coming in time as Apple and other app developers continue to give us more support and features for shortcuts. But let's just go ahead and discuss some more real world examples, you know, things that we can do right now with this. Of course, we can run any of our signals to flash the lights or do other effects. You know, this always makes me actually think of one of my favorite movies when I was a kid called Three Ninjas. Any of you 90s kids out there might remember that one, but uh, I remember these kids, you know, in the movie they had a light in their bedroom that would flash red when the parents was coming down the hall. Rocky, look. I, always, I just always thought that was super cool. But now with a HomeKit motion sensor and the Signals app on your Mac, you could create something just like that very easily. Just create a new automation in the Signals app and choose your motion sensor as the trigger. Then choose the signal you want to flash the light. So the great thing about using Signals for something like this as opposed to just you know, scripting and stuff in a automation is that, you know, once the signal flashes your lights, it will return the lights to the previous state, which is something I still haven't been able to figure out using just shortcuts. Additionally, you can set something like this up for door sensors, you know, flash the lights when certain doors or, or windows are open. This could potentially be really beneficial, I think, to maybe those who are hearing impaired. Uh, I just see a lot of benefit for something like this. Similarly, you could have a HomeKit doorbell, have certain lights flash when somebody rings the doorbell, and then have the lights return to their previous state after they flash. So that's one that I'm actually using. And of course, as mentioned, we also have that option to run any of your shortcuts based on these HomeKit triggers. So using a motion sensor, you could also run a shortcut that sends an iMessage or does any number of other things. You know, imagine if the security system is triggered or if a leak sensor detects water, you can actually have a shortcut that sends a message to everyone in the family or maybe an email. Configure a shortcut to send a text message to everyone in the family when a door or window is you know, left open too long. Basically, if you can get the Shortcuts app here on the Mac to do something, you can have that something triggered by any of your HomeKit accessories. You know, you could use a HomeKit button, just say, for example, in your home office, 
push the button when you're ready to start work. It'll make your work scene come on with all your lights and stuff the way you like it. It could start your work focus mode and maybe open up your favorite apps that you you know, usually start the day with uh, up in split screen mode. All kinds of stuff you can do when you really get creative. Again, there are some limitations here, but hearing the developer of the Signals app's commitment to update the app with more features, you know, even as we speak, plus the fact that Shortcuts on the Mac is still new and probably going to continue to expand to gain new features. To me, that says that this is a very promising step for the integration of HomeKit and personal shortcuts. I'm really excited to see where this goes. You know, having the Mac as that always on device that can run shortcuts, I think can open up some real possibilities. But let me know what you think. Is this something that is also of interest to you? Do you like these kinds of videos? I'm always interested to hear from you and learn you know, what you guys wanna see here on the channel. Check out my automations playlist right here if you wanna see more videos on this kind of stuff. Hit that like button if you got something out of this video and don't forget to subscribe for new HomeKit videos every Sunday morning. And stay tuned because we're also gonna start doing some more live streaming soon here on the channel. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next one.